But few stories are as compelling as that of Yeshikasa and her great-grandfather. His country knew him as royalty, thought to be a descendant of King Solomon. His worshipers, including reggae legend Bob Marley, knew him as a messiah. And the world knew him as Hala Selassie, ruler of Ethiopia, the last in a 3,000-year-old dynasty. The new documentary, Grandpa Was an Emperor, is all about her journey of discovery and coming to terms with both a privileged and very painful past. I was thrilled to be a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> but your heart? My heart, heart? I'm an Ethiopian. For 40 years, um, Yeshikasa has I lived in relative obscurity as a banker in the Big Apple, exiled from her homeland and her birthright. Some people want to call me princess, but I'm really not one. But your grandpa? My grandfather was an emperor, yes. Grandpa was an emperor is the little known story behind the overthrow of Emperor Haile Selassie. A monarchy which claimed ancestral ties to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. So what, what do I remember about him? He was very strict, very austere, very quiet. You weren't allowed to just talk and act in any kind of childlike way. You had to be very grown up. From 1930 to 1974, Selassie federalized a once feudal nation, abolishing slavery, resisting Italy's fascist occupation. Emperor Haile Selassie rides in majesty through London. And raising Ethiopia's political standing around the world. The White House rolls out the red carpet for Emperor Haile Selassie. He also presided over the continent's first African Union. But poverty and a crippling famine began to undermine his rule, as well as his annexation of neighboring Eritrea. This is the last picture taken before our lives went straight to hell. This film answers a lifetime of questions. This was the hardest one ever because of all these stories. Filmmaker Constance Marks, director of Sundance Award winner Being Elmo, befriended Casa while the two volunteered at a homeless shelter. She told me her family's story. And she said, we're thinking about either writing a book or making a film. And I said, do you know what I do? And she said, no. And I said, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Casa's story begins in 1973, when at 11, she and her sister were sent abroad to boarding school. I was a badly behaved child, so... You admit I, that freely. I do freely admit that. Um, so they had promised us, you know, when you go, you'll be, you'll be back in less than a year, you'll be able to come home. But in September 1974, a Marxist-Leninist junta called the Dur seized the nation. My father called and he said, don't come back to Ethiopia, go to Switzerland. <laughs> When the revolution first started, you know, they kept saying it's going to be a bloodless revolution. Okay. They promised, you know, land for the farmers and economic reforms and political reforms and social reforms. Instead, it became a bloodbath, first with the execution of 60 men, then with the Red Terror, which claimed hundreds of thousands of lives, including that of her father, and on August 27, 1975, Haile Selassie himself. And later on, we discovered that he was murdered. Yeah, he was murdered. And he used to be an emperor, you know? What do you think the perception of your great-grandfather was versus the reality? I think there was a perception that he was all-powerful, and I think that's where people make a mistake about Grandpa. You know, he um, abolished slavery, he um, federalized the system, and he had massive opposition in doing that from these incredibly powerful um, aristocratic families that had as much power as him. But it's the survivors that the film seeks to hail. My mom had resisted making any kind of film or talking about what had happened. I was upset that people did not know what they had done to my family and to the women, the imperial women. Eleven women in her family were held captive for 15 years. Was it worth it being born who we are? Absolutely not. 
not for me. I sort of fell in love with the fervor by which Yeshi was telling her story. I call her Auntie Yeshi. Tony award-winning actress Cynthia Arrivo is executive producer. Auntie Yeshi was just telling this really vulnerable story, no holds barred. We don't get to do that very often, and I just, so this, it's a huge, huge life that was lived and is still being lived, and I, I just felt immediately like people had to see it. I don't want to spoil it. Right, but, right. I don't want to spoil it, but there are moments there. The there Bob Marley like, moment. He was a good person, and he took care of me. The pioneering reggae superstar followed the Rastafarian movement, which regarded Selassie as a modern-day messiah. Marley helped rescue Casa's younger sisters. Bob was the first person to say to me, like, do you actually know who your grandfather is, what he means to people, what he means to the West? What was he to you? He was somebody that I loved very much. Casa hopes telling this story will set the record straight. The good and the bad on all sides. Mommy, do you think this is important to do? Yeah, at least they'll have something uh, to remember, because it's very easily forgotten. I'm not reasonable about my family. I don't like hearing bad things about them. And it was always this conversation where people were very pro the royal family or very against it, and it was hard to get to know the middle and so this film I think it gave me real perspective. So what do you think people will say when they see this? You know I think this film is about women. You know um, the ladies in London who helped the princesses who were in prison, the, the people who helped rescue my siblings like this film is about women so I hope that that's what people see.